Listen, let's keep it real. The Canon C70 on paper is a beast. And I almost jumped on the bandwagon. I almost jumped on the train of putting in the pre-order until I started to look at a few things and make some comparisons. Today, we're going to talk about why I still plan on getting the Sony a7S III over the Canon C70. Stay tuned. What's going on guys? My name is Ty Turner and if this is your first time on this channel, you got to remember that this channel is about turning your passion into profit. We talk about the business side of content creation and business decisions sometimes involves buying gear, the right gear, right? And Canon announced the C70 and I was like, man, 16 plus stops of dynamic range, the size and shape of a 1DX this camera looks like it's a beast until I started to really compare it to the a7S III. This is Canon's attempt to drop a camera right at the point where they were losing a little ground in the video game to Sony. They had the R5, which had 8K, but massive overheating issues that kind of pulled real videographers away from considering that camera as a flagship daily workhorse. People started to fade and go over towards the Sony. A lot of people canceled their pre-orders and bam, they hit you with a C70, which is a pretty dope camera. But today we're gonna to talk about five reasons why I'm not picking it up. I'm still going with the Sony a7S III. Number five is the full frame sensor the a7S III provides. I don't care who you are, you probably love bokeh. And a lot of reasons people started filming on DSLRs and to begin with like the 5D Mark II and now mirrorless is because full frame sensors offered a look that you just couldn't get out of Super 35. Now. Let me make sure I clarify that because you can pretty much replicate it out of a Super 35, but you don't get it with ease as you do with a full frame sensor. Plus, I like having full frame sensors with glass to match, really wide shots. So for me, having a full frame sensor is a game changer. Now, wait a minute before you say, well, the C70, Canon does offer a speed booster, which allows you to replicate a full frame sensor, but it's an additional $600. That brings us to number four, price at $5,500. It is $2,000 more than the a7S III. For that price, I can go get an a7 III and have it as my B cam and still come out cheaper than buying one C70. That doesn't even include adding the adapter to make it full frame. That adapter is an additional $600. So you're looking at about $6,100 to get the C70 to perform as well as the a7S III. Number three is low light capability. Don't get me wrong, Canon has great low light cameras. I think that the C70 will be among those cameras that provide great low light, but nothing is close to the A7S series. Nothing is close to it. A night vision camera is as close as you're gonna get and it's all green. So I don't think with the Super 35 sensor, it's going to be able to compete with the A7S III. Now, a lot of people are like, well, you're looking at it on paper. Where do you test it out? Listen, Canon has provided Nothing that can get close to the a7S III yet. I don't see them doing it with this particular camera when this camera shares the same sensor as the C300. So I don't see it happening, bro. Number two, and this is a big one. The a7S III provides raw output. The Canon C70 for $2,000 more does not. You have a bunch of different codecs, which is pretty much... They offer you a few different flavors of H.264 and H.265. And that's it. You don't have raw on a camera that they're calling a cinema camera. It's not providing you with raw output. Now, to some of you, you don't care about this. This is not a big deal. This is not a game changer. You're like, I don't want to deal with raw anyway. But there are times where I like to shoot raw. When I'm shooting a personal project, a movie, a film, or something very cinematic, 
I want it in raw. So I want that capability. I don't want to spend $2,000 more and not get that. That's something that should have been included. So because Canon has so many cameras, they don't want to interfere or pull sales from cameras that are above it that don't offer raw. So this is Canon's way of kind of shooting itself in the foot. Hey, pause for a second. I know you're in the middle of something dope, but I wanna make sure I tell you about a course over at Flash Film Academy that changed the game for me. It literally took my business from attracting mostly low-end clients to consistently landing bigger clients with bigger budgets. It's called the five key steps for creating an effective portfolio that converts. If you're a photographer, videographer, editor, or graphic designer, this course teaches you how to take what your brand does well and present those things in a way to help the client understand how your brand can help solve their problem. This course isn't just about editing, but helping you understand that when clients are trying to make a decision on why or even if they should work with you, blasting them with your best video clips set to music just won't cut it anymore. It doesn't set you apart, show value, or help buyers in the process of making a decision. This course teaches you how to create a commercial for your brand, providing a first impression that will help you 10x your ability to land clients. Remember, if you can't effectively tell your story, clients won't hire you to effectively tell their story. Create a demo reel that sells the client before you even speak to them. Go ahead, click the link. Let's get started. The number one reason why I'm going with the A7S III over the Canon C70 is size and form factor. The Canon C70 looks like a love child of a 1DX and a C100. It's like they just smashed them together and said, here, y'all want a camera that looks like a DSLR? I gotcha. Instead of saying, hey, let us just create what works so that we can pack these features in the right form factor. It's kind of like they was just like, I'm gonna give you a camera that looks like a DSLR instead of giving you real great camera features in a DSLR. Not too crazy about that. The A7S III is small. It works on smaller gimbals, smaller sliders, smaller jibs, maybe even throw it on a drone, you know, you'll have an easier chance at doing that. So I like that small form factor. I have a Ursa Mini. It's a whole lot. I love the camera. I love the image quality, but it is a lot to carry. And if I can carry something smaller and get that same quality, I'm definitely going to do it. And the size factor here is extremely important between these two cameras on why I'm choosing the A7S III over the Canon C70. Now, there are some other things, some honorable mentions that we have to mention. Another thing to consider is out of the box, neither camera offers full size XLR. The C70 has many SLRs, you still gotta go buy the cable. With the A7S III, you have to buy the adapter. The adapter is around $4.99 and it adds full size XLRs both cameras offer phantom power. This is hit or miss. It's up to you on which direction you want to go in. I wish with the C70, they would have at least added XLRs to the top handle, kind of like the C100. I do, however, on the C70, love the idea of having 17 stops of dynamic range. I think Canon is excellent at providing great image quality. My fear is that those one or two or three stops is buried somewhere in the lows, the shadows, the blacks, and they're being counted as actual stops at dynamic range. Every camera company is guilty of doing this. With the A7S III being so good in low light, if you bury two or three stops at the bottom end, I feel a little more confident in having the ability to use those stops. Plus, I'm getting raw out of that camera so that I can actually pull my shadows up and actually get those stops. Whereas the C70 is shot in 8.264, 8.265 in a pretty wrapper. And you may not have the ability to pull those shadows up. Both are providing 10 bit. You still get a hefty file. With the A7S III, you're gonna get a higher bit rate with RAW. Another thing I love about the C70 is the 10 stops of ND built into the camera. If you need this, this is a game changer. However, you can always go with NDs or a matte box 
with your A7S III. There's ways to go both ways. You got to decide on if that two grand extra is worth it. As far as autofocus, I feel like there's going to be about a tie with autofocus. Sony has really stepped up in their autofocus. And they've offered features that Canon are starting to catch up to, like face detection, eye detection. It was something that Sony offered first, and everybody tried to jump on board to replicate it. So it's kind of like a tie for autofocus. Either way, with a $2,000 price difference, the ability to have RAW, a full frame sensor, a smaller package, I'm still going to go with the A7S III. I think that the C70 is a great camera. And if there was a Canon that I would buy now, that would be it. Or I would wait for the C200 Mark II. Now the C70 supposedly is Canon's camera that's between the C100 and the C200. They should have called it the C150 if you ask me. But I don't know how those guys make decisions though. You know, I don't know nothing about that. I'm just a guy on YouTube. I would have rather seen a C100 Mark III that just had 4K capabilities because it would have been a better camera than this. If you would have put this sensor in the C100, you gave a C100 16 plus stops of dynamic range with the XLR ports and the form factor, I would have rather seen that than this. I feel like this camera is designed to go after people who see a video camera when they see a DSLR, period. Not, not high-end cinematographers, not guys that are using reds and black magic ursas, but those who see video when they see mirrorless and see DSLRs. Those are the guys this camera is designed for. I'm just not crazy about the shape and the size. It's huge. And I just, it's just, I'm not crazy about it. Just me personally, that's my opinion. If you feel different, post it in the comments. But those are the five reasons why I plan on going with the A7S III over the Canon C70. What do you think? Are you going with the C70? Canon's color science and image quality is top of the line. You got to love it. Although Sony is not, I wouldn't even say behind. They're on par with Sony. And I think the A7S III is a game changer as far as what it offers. I feel like Sony gave us the camera we needed. Canon gave us the camera we wanted, and over time, you'll realize this is really what we needed, a workhorse that can provide the best 4K we can get at that price point. So post your comments below. Make sure you hit that like button, share, and subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next video.